Hello everyone, this is DA from EA Academy. In the previous video, we have assembled our system in these three uh, matrices. The first is the stiffness matrix, uh, and this is a global stiffness matrix. That is why there is no why there is no superscript in all of these things because we are in the global system. We assemble them from a local system and elevate them into a global system. So we have three matrices. The first is the stiffness matrix. The second is the displacement vector. And the third is the force vector. That is the combination of the discrete and the continuous forces. The fourth step here is imposing the boundary conditions uh, that will be in the system or that will be in a certain domain that we have. So uh, let's suppose we let's suppose the bar that we are dealing with a linear bar with three nodes is fixed from this end. Uh, let's suppose here this is the first node, this is the second node, and this is the third node. Again, we are in the global system right now. That is why we are not talking about any element level thing at this point. So this bar, let's suppose it is fixed at the first end. That is why the displacement of uh, this node or the displacement of this end would be zero because u is representing the displacement so u at uh, that node 1 will be equal to 0 and that is the boundary condition that we have so this is just one boundary condition that we have in um, the system that we have so if we plug the boundary condition uh, in the system so the system would be like this and we all know the basic uh, matrix multiplication uh, that would be in the this direction, right? So if we multiply this thing, we know that we will be ending uh, with the two cross two stiffness matrix with these entries with k two two with this stiffness matrix k three two and k um, three three and u two and u three because we know that the stiffness matrix. Um, we, we know that the displacement vector at the end is equal to zero and we will only be dealing with this uh, reduced uh, form of this. Now this form is known as the condensed form or the reduced form because we have plugged the boundary conditions and we have now the smaller version or the reduced version of the system that initially we have. At this point um, we will be again multiplying these things in order to get the values for for the displacement vectors that we have so here we will be having some values for u2 and u3 at this point and this point because we know that here this the displacement is zero after solving this part this whole part we will be having the displacement at the second node, displacement at the third node. And that is where we have the final displacement values at particular nodes. Because we are dealing with a general system here, we have no fixed force values here, we have not fixed any um, A, D, U by D, X value here right now. That is why there is no fixed value for U2 and U3, X. We will be solving an example after completing this generic uh, finite element method um, system because here we are understanding what is in the finite element method and in the next few videos we will be solving an example uh, with all of the we have learned in the in this generic form in order to see when things are be, when things are in a specific situation that how we will be getting a final and the fixed value for the displacement for the force for the case that are the stiffness a du by dx um, and the displacement vectors so here in the fourth step when we impose the boundary condition that we have here i am assuming that only one uh, boundary condition um, we have that the at this point the displacement is zero and we uh, plug it that and the one thing that you should remember this is not a case always that the displacement at one end is always equal to zero. It can and cannot be equal to zero, depends on the situation, depends on the problem that we are dealing with. But here, 
when a displacement at any end is equal to zero, the whole stiffness system and the whole, not only the stiffness, the whole um, system in the global will be condensed uh, like this. You know that in the fourth step we got the primary variable, we got the solution for the primary variables after solving the condensed form. In the fifth step, that is known as a post-processing, because we have now the basic thing that we know that what we're looking for, uh, initially we were looking for the basic primary variable, the solution of the primary variable. After solving the condensed form, in the inbound, after imposing the boundary condition, we will be getting uh, the primary solution for the primary variable. After that thing, the fifth step is the post-processing, in which we will be using these primary variables and the complete distribution in order to um, solve, in order to get the other things that we want. For example, if we want to have the gradient, if we want to find the stress or the strain um, of the road of the system that we have. So we will be um, solving all of these things after f getting the final uh, primary variable. So. Let's suppose we are looking for the desired quantity that we're looking for is gradient. Before finding the gradient, we have to write a complete um, distribution. We know that u of x is equal to summation of psi i and u i, right? And again, we are taking a linear system in which there are two nodes. We are taking a linear system, right? Again. And we are in an element level equation to find the complete distribution at each element level. So we can write this because if we have two nodes at each element level, then we can expand it and add most two terms, u1, psi1, u2, psi2. And we know that we have derived psi1 and psi2 at element level linear system. So we can pl plug the psi1 and psi2 expressions in there. And in the previous uh, part, we will be getting u1 and u2 values uh, from this. So we will have a complete distribution at this point. Let me write this i1 and psi2 here. So this is the complete distribution that we have. After plugging uh, the u1 value we can uh, that we got in the fourth step, u2 value, again, the same thing, and psi1 and psi2 value that we know that we have derived in the previous steps. So now we have the complete distribution. Now if the desired quantity is uh, gradient, if we want to find out the gradient, then how we can find out the gradient? We can simply take the rate of change of this displacement, and we are all aware of the rate of change uh, of the displacement with respect to x. And you can take the derivative of these things with respect to x uh, by fixing that u1 and u2. So at this point, we are actually winding up the finite element method. This is the last step, that is post-processing step and we are done with each and every step of the finite element method. And in the next video, we will be starting an example for the finite element method in which we will be specifying all of the mandatory things in order to see how to solve a specific problem by a finite element method. So this is for now, looking for most of the videos, then you can subscribe to this channel in order to watch more upcoming videos. We will meet in the next video. Till then, take care, goodbye.